Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Thank you. I don't know about every preacher, but I think most of them, you can be seated just for a minute, but I think most preachers, when they get ready to preach in the beginning of the service to the time he gets to the pulpit, he's looking for a confirmation of what he wants to preach. And I got my confirmation tonight. And I believe with all of my heart that God wants to do something fantastic here tonight. These are not just words. I believe God wants to show himself mighty here tonight. Amen, amen. I'm glad I'm in an apostolic church that still preaches sin is sin. Not afraid to name it. A lot of churches you go in now, they'll say, this is okay, that's okay. But I'm glad I'm still part of an organization, mostly, that believes heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and with grace. Sin can never, sin can never enter there. Amen, amen. Amen. I've often said, if you're going to live for God, live for God. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Be the biggest and the best you can be. Amen, amen. Well, I have enjoyed my return to Danville. It's been a while, and I'm certainly happy to be back here again. And uh, you never can tell. I might be able to show up again. Amen. But until then, let me leave this with you. Joshua chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hands Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. You shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. When it shall come to pass, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Lord, I love you. I need you. Again, Lord, I'm asking for you to stand by me. I cannot do this by myself. But, oh, if you'll lay your hand upon me again, Lord, and help me to preach your people tonight, that they would be blessed, hearts would be turned, souls would be saved, bodies would be healed. Let your power be manifest in Jesus' name. I pray, amen, amen. You may be seated. It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. I will preach for just a little while here tonight when all you have is a shout. When all you have is a shout. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, battles must be won in the mind before you start. You can't go into a battle and figure out how you're going to win then. you got to know going in what you're going to do. Well, I'm 40 miles out to sea and hit another stump. Amen. The three Hebrew children had a made-up mind. They said, our God is able. Amen. Daniel had a made-up mind when he was asked by King Darius, is, is your God able? He said, he's able. The apostle Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I got a made-up mind here. Amen. So you have to know, amen, how to win the battle before you get in there. Battles have to be won in the mind 
before you enter the conflict. And you have an enemy that is relentless. He is, it's already been stated, he would like to see every last person in this building in a red hot hell. So you're in a battle every day for your never dying soul. And while you're in this battle, you have got to know how to win this battle. You can't wait till a crisis comes and then try to figure this thing out. We've got a battle plan here. It's called the Word of God. And it, it explains an awful lot to us if we'll just take a little time. In the seventh chapter of the book of Judges now, I know you said the old man lost his mind. He just went from Jericho over to Judges. But I, I'm coming back. Judges 7 and 13 and when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellows and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto the tent and smote it that it fell, overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the hosts. And so it was, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned to the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided 300 men into three companies and put the trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and a lamp within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look unto me and do likewise. And behold, when I am come out to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall you do. When I blow with a trumpet, and I that all are with me, then blow you with the trumpet on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men went with him and came to the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hand, and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in the left hand with the trumpets in the right hand to blow with all. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. I'm trying to preach a little bit here tonight that when all you have is a shout. Amen. You know the story of Gideon, how he started out with thousands of men. And then 10,000 sent away, 7,000, until he whittled it down to 300 men to go against this army of the Midianites. Now, the reason for that is God wanted them to know that it was God that was doing this thing and not them. Because it seemed unreal for 300 men to go against the armies of the Midianites. But God was in this whole program. And God wanted them to know just exactly what he could do if you just go ahead and do what he says. Well, hallelujah, anyhow. Amen, amen. Now, when, when all you have is a shout, you can shout in the name of the Lord. Uh, Bill LaFoon, good to see you, Bill. Haven't seen you for a long time. Amen. When the shout goes up, then the glory comes down. Wonder why we praise the way we praise. Because it, when we send praises up, <laughs> the glory starts to come down. If you're just going to sit on your hand like a bump on a dill pickle, then ain't nothing going to happen, honey. But when we lift him up and give him glory, amen, God began to move in ways that we never dreamed he would move. Amen. God will not fight a battle that he did not bring you to, but he will fight the battle and win the battle that he brings you to. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. He's got it all taken care of. Amen. Now, when the, I'm going back now to Jericho. So you know, I'm back on track, folks. You, you can quit sweating. When the Lord came to Joshua... 
Amen. Joshua saw this man stand there with a sword. And Joshua said, are you with us or are you for them? Now, my translation here is the Lord said, I got it. I come to take command. I come to take over. Amen. And I, 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 I don't know who's fighting what kind of battles or what. And you don't have to be a psychic to stand up here. You don't have to be a prophet to stand up here to know there's problems in a church this size. When I say problem, I'm talking about your own problems. I don't have to tell you. Uh, you got a bobby pin in your purse or you got a pen in your purse or you got a sore back or whatever. I mean, it, it doesn't take very much intelligence to do that. But God is here in this building tonight. If I ever felt him in my life, I feel him in this building here tonight. And God is wanting to help somebody here that's in a struggle and you don't know what you're going to do about it. And all you got is a shout. But I would preach to you tonight, the shout is all you need. Amen, amen, amen. You, you want victory tonight, but there's a Jericho in your path. There's victory ahead, but there's a Jericho confronting you. Years ago, we sang an old song that said, we are able to go up and take the country and possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be there, the way to hinder, God will surely give to us the victory. Amen. amen. And I believe it's still true tonight. Amen. And what you want from God, he has already given you. If it's salvation, Calvary took care of that. If it's healing, that's in the atonement. Amen. If it's provision, my God shall supply all of your need. Amen. Amen. Now, before Israel could enter into the promised land, they had to go through Jericho. Now, why couldn't they go another direction? They could. But it would mean years and years of travel. But God had a reason for them to go through Jericho. Because if you remember correctly from the word of God, when they were coming through the wilderness, and I know it's, it's foreign to you and I, but there were murmurers and grumblers and complainers. We don't have them today. And God said, I'm going to take care of all these mumblers and grumblers and complainers. They're not going in. Remind me of a story I read in the Bible. I, I just got this one. Just coming to me now. And it's, it's amazing how God does this. But, you know, he said, I planted a vineyard. I put the best grapes in there. I took all the rocks out. I, I, I built a, a hedge around it. I put a watchman over it. I gave you the best I had. And all I wanted was, was sweet grapes. And I'm getting sour grapes. It was a weed patch that might have been. I don't want to be a weed patch. I want to be a garden, amen, that blossoms, amen, amen, by the hand of God. I don't have any complaints. I've got a God that loves me, a God that cares for me, a God that brought me out of darkness, a God that has healed my body, a God that has provided for my family, a God that has made a way when there was no way. All I can say is praise him, praise him. He brought me out of the deep miry clay, set my feet on a rock to stay, put a song in my soul today, and it's a song of praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him in the noontime. I'll praise him when the sun goes down. I'll praise him when I got a job, when I don't have a job, when I know where I'm going, when I don't know where I'm going.
Now, before Israel could even get into the promised land, a couple of things had to happen. First of all, Joshua and Caleb are the only ones of this age bracket that have been circumcised. These other guys, that they, they weren't in the wilderness, so they never partook of that thing. And so in order for them to go in to the promised land, they needed, for lack of a better word, a rite of passage or, or a setting apart. They had to be set apart for God. And this was the way that they did it in the Old Testament. They set themselves apart. In order for me, in order for you to receive anything from God, we're going to have to set ourselves apart from all these problems and situations in our lives. Oh, but brother, you don't know how, uh, it doesn't matter how big it is. You've got a God that's a whole lot bigger. Amen. There's nothing he can't take care of, nothing he can't handle. All he's wanting you to do is shout praises unto him. Just shout praises unto him. That's all he's asking. Amen, amen. The second thing that had to happen, amen, before they, they, uh, when they, before they entered in, God had quit feeding them. The manna had ceased. They're no longer in the wilderness. The, the water, uh, the rock that followed them is no, there, no longer there. The manna has ceased. Amen. But the corn and the milk and the honey, everything is in the promised land. Houses, vineyards you don't have to plant, it's all there. I've given it to you. All you have to do is go and get it. Well, Jesus, help me now. Amen. God will, God will do for us what we can't do, but he will not do for you and I what we can do. Amen. And so if there's something you can do, he expects you to do it, and he'll take care of the rest. Well, 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 well. Amen. Joshua 5 and 13, it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? This is where God appeared. Amen. To Joshua. Verse 14, he said, Nay, but as captain of the Lord of hosts, I am now come. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and began to worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord? When he was confronted, amen, by God, and then the Lord uh, began to talk to him, he, and he fell on his face and began to worship God. If you've got something you need tonight, amen, just worship God. I found his zip code. I know where he lives. God inhabits the praises of his people. He lives in the midst of praise. Sometimes we're in church, we want, ah, oh, this thing's deader than a hammer. No, no, you're deader than a hammer. God is never deader than a hammer. His word is never dead as a hammer. Amen, amen. It's just you got to give yourself a shake every once in a while and say, hey, maybe it's, it's, it's me. I've been singing the song wrong. It's the preacher and the elders in the church, dear Lord, standing in the need of prayer. No, no, you got the song wrong. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Ah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And after he worshiped the Lord, then the Lord tells him what he's going to do, gives him instruction. And when you worship and praise God, amen, for your situation, he's going to give you some instruction here. Now, this sounds foreign to some of you because I can see you're just sitting there waiting. What, what, what's going on now? You know what really jars my preserves? We, we have people in Pentecostal churches 
been in churches all their life, and they're strangers to the presence of God. God began to move, amen, his spirit began to move, and they're looking around wondering what's going on, what's happening. I want you to know, amen, once I feel that touch, I want to get in the middle of this thing. I want to be in the great big middle of it. If there's going to be a miracle, I want to be around it wherever it is. Amen. And I come to church, and I may not look at, I'm, I'm 80, and I may not look like I'm doing much up here, but I, I'm only 21 on the inside when this thing gets rocking. And I'll tell you what, when it gets to, I came in in the fire, I'm going out in the fire. I come in shouting, I'm going out shouting. Now, I may not shout the way I used to shout. I may not dance the way I used to dance. I may not run the way I used to run. But, honey, I'm still shouting, I'm still dancing, and I'm still running. And once that trumpet sounds, I'm going higher, higher, higher. Ando ramoko shanda. Amen, amen. After he worshiped, God revealed his plan to him. Once a day, I want you to walk around the city for six days. Every day, walk around at once, go back to the camp and worship and, and uh, be with your family. The next day, walk, do the same thing, six days. And then on the seventh day, that's what I want you to do, go around seven times. And the priests are going to be there, and they're going to have these ram's horns. And when they blow the ram's horns, I want you to shout. And when you do, the walls are coming down. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was there, I hope I wouldn't be a skeptic. Because Jordan or Jericho had walls that some... Uh, commentaries have stated the walls were so thick you could race five to six chariots side by side around the top of that thing. Now that's a pretty thick wall. Jericho at that time in that region had the most feared army and the most experienced soldiers. They had the best of weaponry. They had catapults. Israel had a few sticks, a few knives, and maybe a couple of swords. But they had a secret weapon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Little as much when God is in it. Amen, amen. Amen. The battle is coming. Israel has to know what to do. Now, I told you earlier you got to know what to do when you're going into a battle before you get into it. Now, Brother Van Loo may excommunicate me after I tell you this story. But 15 years ago, I was 65 then. I was preaching revival in Canada. And, and I got to the church early this one night. Nobody was there. So I thought I'd go up the end of the street to the mall and uh, kill some time up there, which I did. And it was time to get back, come to church. And so I was coming back out of the mall to my car and coming out the door, these three punks were standing there. Now, I know better than to walk out that door. But I can see my car. So I'm telling myself, I'll just go out and walk around them and get to my car and get out of here. So when I walked out the door, I went to go around them, and they moved the way I was going. So I went the other way, and they moved that way. So I just went right through them. When I went through them, this one guy yelled at me, and I kept walking because I wanted to get to my car because I carry a hickory stick in there to check my tires with. <laughs> just as I got to my car this mouthy one slammed me up against the car turned me around and grabbed me by the scruff of the throat here and started saying stuff to me I'm, I'm an old man I'm 65 can't handle this stuff 
but he's getting me mad. And you don't want me mad, but I'm a nice guy. I'm the nicest guy I know. So he's running his mouth at me, and I'm just standing there looking at him. And he said, why don't you say something? Oh, I said, my mother said it was ignorant to talk when someone else was talking. <laughs> well, he called my mother a very, very rude name. And when he did, I hit him. <laughs> I hit him so hard. All you could see was the whites of his eyes. He hit the deck. Sound like a gun going off. I snapped the jaw. He hit the deck. He was out like a light. I turned to these other two guys, and just as I turned, a policeman come over. He said, hold it. He said, I saw everything going on. He said to the two guys, pick him up and get him off this property. You come back on this property, I'll arrest you. And he looked at me, and he said, are you all right? I said, I am now. He said, you get in your car and have a good day. Well, I got in my car and locked the door, and boy, the sand just run out of me then. I was done. I'm too old for that stuff. But I told you that story to tell you this. I had to have a battle plan going in. I knew when I come out if there was a problem, I had to get to my car. That's all there was to it. And if something started before then, the first guy to go down is the one with the big mouth. Once you get him out of the way, you're, you're, you're in good shape. I learned that a long time ago. Israel, back to the story here now. Israel is getting ready for the battle of their life. Amen. They, they've got to get into the promised land. That's all there is to it. Amen. And so all they have really for this battle is a shout. Can you imagine what some of them guys must have thought when Joshua said, here's the plan? <laughs> then on the seventh day, we're going to do it seven times. And when we do and then we shout, those formidable walls are coming down. The reason that God was taking them through Jericho was that the majority of those young men there had never seen the power of God. They never saw the rock that followed in the wilderness. They never saw the manna that was given to them every day to provide for them. They never saw clothes that didn't wear out. They never saw the miracle of God, amen, at the Jordan, at the uh, uh, Red Sea. They never saw what God could do. And God wanted to show them just exactly what he could do. Amen, amen. And so, you see, they, they, they were just kind of beside themselves a little bit, wondering how this is going to happen. And like me, let me tell you another story. Uh, I got a lot further to go home than you guys do. My wife decided one day she wanted to sell the stove. It was only six months old, a brand new stove. She wants to sell it. Well, you know the story. If mama's not happy, ain't nobody happy. But, you know, there's another side of that coin. If papa's not happy. Ain't nobody happy. But she wanted that stove gone. It was a gas stove, and she wanted an electric stove. We talked a little bit about it, but I'm leaving that discussion aside. <laughs> then she advertised it. And this couple came to look at the stove. And they were from one of the islands, Jamaica, Barbados, somewhere down there. This guy was a monster. He was big. I don't mean fat. He was big. Years ago, they used to have a wrestler called Man Mountain Dean. 
This guy here was a man mountain. I'm telling you, he was a big dude. They looked at the stove. They liked it. They bought it. I helped them get it to the front porch. Now, at the front porch, we had like three steps down. When we got to the porch, he stepped down. And he reached over to get it, and I got behind it here. He looked at me, and he said, I got it. <laughs> well, Dumbo here is not quite uh, up to speed yet, so I'm still trying to lift it up. He looked at me again and said, I got it. Well, I'm still grunting away. And he said, hey, I got it. I said, hey, knock yourself out. <laughs> he picked that stove up. Now, this was not an apartment stove. This was a five burner, double oven, big joker. He picked that sucker up, walked it over to the truck, lifted it up and set it on the truck all by himself. I told him, I said, I don't ever want to get you mad at me. <laughs> I told you that little story because when he said, I got it, what he was telling me to do, okay, I got it now. We, we've done everything else here. I got it. I can handle this. And that's what God said, amen, with the children of Israel. When you go around six times, once a, a day for six days, and on that seventh day when you go around, and the seventh time you blow the horn, and you begin to shout unto the Lord, I got it. I got it. It doesn't matter how thick the walls are. It doesn't matter how many men they got. It doesn't matter what kind of weapons they got. I got it. It doesn't matter what your problem is. It doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter what your battle is. He's got it. All you got to do is just do what he tells you. Lift your hands and praise him. He's going to take care of it. That's all you got to do. It's not, I mean, it's not rocket scientists here. You, you don't have to worry about it. Just do what he says. When all you have is a shout, you got a secret weapon. Amen, amen, amen. You got a secret weapon. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be power in his might. Now, God can only protect you and I when our walk with him is strong. That just went over some people's heads right here. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm not going to get political, but I want to take a little sidestep here. We need to pray for this nation like we've never prayed for it before. When you can kill a baby after it's born and lay it on a table and let it die, something's wrong. Amen. They talk about having rights for an abortion. Hey, think about that before you climb into bed. Make that choice before you go to bed. I got to get off that because I get upset on that thing. Well, hallelujah. Take on you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword and the spirit, which is the word of God. We have to remain strong because our enemy is relentless. Jeremiah said, if you can't run with the footman, what are you going to do when the horsemen come? If you can't live for God now while his spirit is here on earth, what do you think you're going to go through when God takes his church out? Well, praise God. Amen. 
Someone wrote a song one time, everybody's going to heaven, nobody's going to hell. I want you to know that is a stupid song. Everybody's not going to heaven. Some said, all roads lead to Rome. I'm not going to Rome. I'm going to that place that John saw coming down out of heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. That's where I'm heading. You want to go to Rome, have at it. But if we can't live for God now, how do we plan to do it later? When Israel was coming out of the wilderness, you know, and, and uh, uh, Abraham or Moses was up on the mountain. And he was getting the tablets. They got, they got all bent out of shape. He's, he's gone 40 days and 40 nights. He does, he's not coming back. So make, make us a calf here. And we'll worship that thing. They made a golden calf. And they began to worship the calf. And here's what they said. This is the God that brought us out. And God was up on the mountaintop with Moses, and he said, Moses, get off the mountain. He said, those reprobates, well, he didn't say that. I'm just adding that. Those, those people you brought out of bondage. I got to be careful. I'm getting reckless. He said they, 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 they desecrated themselves. They're down there, they're having an, an orgy. They're getting naked. They're doing all kinds of ignorant. Why is it? Oh, Jesus, help me. Why is it when some people backslide, the first thing they do is start stripping off their clothes? Well, I could go a little bit further. <laughs> I better not. But I tell you, I'm, I'm getting a little bit jumpy myself in churches that I'm visiting. Because I'm watching these ladies, they're wearing skirts that you can only get one leg in, but they're squeezing two in that thing. And it, it's so tight. There's nothing left of the imagination. I don't want to see your curves. Get something that flows a little bit. I'm right off track. I got to get back on here. Psalms 33 and 3. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy, for the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. Psalm 35 and 27, let them shout for joy, and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all day long. Here's my favorite. Amen. Psalms 47 and 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Amen. And shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Whatever standing in your way, shout the name of the Lord. Whatever standing in your way, shout praise unto God. Amen, amen. Watch your walls come tumbling down. Watch them make a way where there is no way. Watch them bring you out with a mighty hand. Now, I know you know this, but act like you don't, so I'm going to look good here to the people that don't know me. The Bible said that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. So that's his atmosphere. That's his kingdom. And when 
We send praises up to God in a uniform manner. And we send praises from the heart. It shatters his kingdom and renders him powerless. Are you with me now? When we send up the praises, then the glory is going to come on down. Here's what I want you to do here tonight. Would you stand for a moment? Amen, amen. Now, I, I know you, yeah, we can't get everybody up here, but we can get as many as we can. Would you, would you just humor me tonight? Would you just step out and, and just try to fill up this altar area here just for a moment? Amen. I'm not going to hurt nobody. I'm not going to do anything magical. I got no powder to throw on you. Years ago, we would sing a chorus at, a, at an altar service just like this. I don't know if you ever heard the chorus. See, because I'm so old, these things are dinosaurs that I sing. But the chorus we used to sing, it went something like this. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. And it sets me free. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter, and it sets me free. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Now, here's what I want us to do. It says, shout unto the Lord. Clap your hands and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. I'm going to do a countdown, three, two, one. And when I do the countdown, amen, whatever's standing in your way, whatever you need for victory here tonight, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your voice. I want you to shout unto the Lord. Clap your hands. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Now, I don't want just a little two-minute exercise here. I want you to shout unto the Lord like somebody in your family just left you $5 million. Get excited about this thing. Amen. Are you ready now? Three, two, one. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. I glorify you. I lift you up, Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy and righteous is your name. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh. 